Hey there, I'm back with a new video. In this video, I'd like to show you a tutorial video about After Effects. And it's a very, very, very first beginner's tutorial. It's for people that have never used After Effects before. I'm going to explain you about something about keyframes and the interface and setting up your first project. Let's get started. The first thing you always have to do is creating a new composition. A composition is something like creating a new document in Office Word when you're typing a new document um, something in Photoshop when you're creating a new canvas to create a cool um, image so a composition is the thing that's going to be in the center of your project that's basically the uh, video that you will see the footage um, on the left side you've got your project area that's basically the area where all your footage will be stored your files and all that kind of stuff at the bottom you will see the layer area, that's basically the timeline for your footage. On the right side you can see some different um, window areas. Uh, it's kind of weird to explain but I will show you if I'm closing my preview and my audio. I can go to window and I will click on audio again and it will appear on the right side. So everything you are um, enable inside your window. If you go top, to the top at window, everything you will click, uh, everything that you will enable will spawn on the right side of your project. So um, the best uh, things you have to enable are effects and presets. That's basically a very important thing. The preview is very important as well. The tools, of course. Um, the, char the character thing for your type uh, typography is also very important. The alignment tool something you have to make sure you've got enabled to center things and all that kind of stuff. The tracker is not very important. It's only important when you are using some real footage, but it's more a little bit of advanced. So I'm not going to teach you guys that now in this tutorial. So let's get right started by creating a new composition. I'm going to tap by clicking on composition and hit new composition. So this is basically the composition settings, the properties you can set to your composition. So I will call the first one, I always call it the main comp. And I'm going to preset, I, you can always go to preset and click on something specific like um, HD4, HDV 1080 by 25 frames per second. But I'm going to click uh, to create my own. I always go to full HD, that's 9020 by 1080 resolution. I also make sure to set it to square pixels and the frame rate is very important. The frame rate has to be the exact same as your footage that your camera is using. So if you've got some footage that's got uh, 60 frames per second, go to 60 frames per second. Um, my frame rate in this case for my footage is 30 frames per second. Uh, if you are creating not something with footage, just only motion graphics or all that kind of stuff, you can also use 24 or 25 frames per second. Don't go lower because if you're going lower, you can see it like it's a shocky video. So 30 frames per second is okay for now. Um, full resolution, of course, always get to full resolution. My duration for 10 seconds is all right. So hit okay. And you can see it's just uh, creating his canvas in the middle of my project. So. If I did something wrong, I always can go to the top again and click on compositing settings and I can change these settings to maybe increase the duration a little bit so you can see it's changing as well. So that's how you set up your composition. The thing is the time indicating is a little bit strange. You can see one zero one zero zero F for frame. It's not like one second, two second and that all has to go with my frames per second if I change it to 25 you can see it's all gone and it's just one second two seconds three seconds so this all depends on what kind of frames per seconds you are using so the next thing I'm always going to create are some folders I'm going to create four for four folders strange word four folders and I will call the first one uh, footage or video just name it footage video something like that I'm calling this one audio and I will call this one and graphics and I'll call the last one comps and you will get it we will drag our main comp inside comps um, the next thing we can do is import our files so right click import file I've got some footage downloaded from the internet 
So I'll click on this nail, import it, and there it goes. My file is inside my project area, and I will drag it into my footage folder. So <clears throat> there we go. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I want it to be in my composition. So you can drag it into your composition area, and there it goes. But you can see it's not perfectly centered, and the best way to import your footage is always drag it into the layer area if you are doing it that way it's always centered inside the middle of the composition you could also just uh, do it another way you could also drag it into and go to the alignment tool and just set it aligned right in the center but that has to depend on where your anchor point is so that's how you set your footage inside the composition area and you can see you've got the timeline if you, I'm changing my time indicator my snail is moving as well and it's a little bit shocky right now, that's because it's not rendered yet. Uh, you can render it by hitting 0 or press on your spacebar. I'm always using 0, so I will hit 0. You can see it's progressing right now. I have to wait a few seconds. And now you can see my footage is rendered. Um, if you've got some large footage and it's taking very slow to render, you could also go to the right side to resolution, set it to quarter so it's rendering a little bit faster. Um, if you don't have the preview settings on the right side, go to window and click on preview. Um, something you have to, if you are using something and you want to watch it on television, always set your title action save mode on. So you can see you don't have to get uh, be beneath those lines. Because if I'm going to type some text and I'm... Uh, I will show you guys if I'm creating some text. Like, snail slow motion. And I will make it a white color. If I've got my text something like here, this part will cut off by some televisions. So those are basically rule, uh, some rules you have to um, know. Don't put something beneath those areas. If you're using it only for um, YouTube, then the, then it doesn't matter. But some old televisions got some cutoffs right here. So I will turn it off for right now because I don't need any. So I've created some text and I'm going to center it right into my footage. So I go to align and I'm going to center it into the middle and I'm going to make sure it's at the bottom of my video. So I've got it right here, snail slow motion. And I'm going to create a shadow first. So I'm going to duplicate it by Ctrl D. So click on the button one, rename it to shadow or whatever and make sure it's got a black color. So now we've got two layers, two text layers. The one is black, the other is white. So I'm going to select the shadow, the black one, and I'm going to effect um, Gaussians, where are you? Blur and sharpen and Gaussian, there it is. You could also go to the right side at effects and presets and type in Gaussian. So there it goes, drag it, Gaussian effect on your shadow. So now you can see we've got an effect on our text. So if I go to my project and I'm going to select my <coughs> uh, layer, my shadow layer, you can see I've got a project option and an effect option. So if I'm going to the effect controls, you can see, well, it basically explains it. It's a control, so you can change the values of your effect. So if I'm going to my uh, white text, you can see we don't have any effects on it. So we, can, we can't control anything at all. So click on your shadow and we can control the blurriness. So we can set it to, I don't know, set it to 30. So dark, it's very dark right now. So you can go to click on this arrow just left of the uh, layer or pressing T for position, but I'm going to just open it to show you guys. You can see we have got some transform tools as well. If I'm changing the opacity to uh, 40, you can see it's just 40. 10 seconds long so we've just got a cool uh, cool shadow beneath our text so now I'm going to explain you something more about keyframes and that's basically something you are using a lot in After Effects first I'm going to cut my uh, text animation I just wanted to spawn at one second so I'm clicking on both layers make sure to select them both and just drag them to the right when it's just at one second so now you can see it's only spawning at one second but the thing is um, it's spawning like boom there it is but I just wanted to a little bit of a, of a fade in and to create a fade in we call it always a fade in or 
just to change the opacity, we have to do something very different. But I will show you guys later. I'm going to first make sure our footage is fade in. So I'm going to zero seconds and I'm going to open the values of my footage. I'm going to do to the transform values. Excuse me, guys. I need some air. Um, all right. Uh, first of all, I'm going to create click on that watch. So it's creating a keyframe right here and it tells After Effects um, the footage is at 100% opacity at 0 frames. Then I'm going to 1 second, so make sure it's perfectly at 1, yeah, there we go, 1 second. And I'm going to tell After Effects it's also at 100% at 1 second as well. So After Effects is calculating what the keyframe has to be between those two keyframes. So the frames has always be 100% because the two, two values are 100%. So if I'm going to change the first keyframe to 0%, After Effects is calculating it as well. After Effects is thinking, hmm, it's going from one second to 100%. That means at a half second, it has to be 50%. So we are going to check it and there it goes 50% at a half second. So After Effects is calculating the time between between those two keyframes. So that, that's how keyframes works. So now we can just get to our text part. So I'm going to make sure my text is appearing at one second perfectly. Now, as you can see, we've got a cool fade in. And now we want our text to be maybe fade in as well, but maybe we can some, do something with a, the scaling value as well. So I'm going to create a new null object. And a null object is something that you are going to hear a lot about and it's a very cool important thing and well you should use it don't igno ignore it it's just very handy just make sure to select both um, layers and click on the parent tool that's that kind of um, rope icon click on it so you can see we are creating a rope just hold click and drag it to the null and I will call rename this on scale titles and because our shadow and snail slow motion text are both layers that just were getting the same values, I'm always using a null object. N don't use any null objects if you've got some layers that has uh, gotten different values. Just only use null objects to layers that got the same values. Because now if I'm going to change the scaling from null object, you can see those two layers are just parenting to the values of a null object. So that's how null object works and I'm going to make sure the anchor point from the null object is right in the center of my text. So if I'm going to change the scaling for my null object right now, you can see the text is scaling from that um, anchor point right here. To move the anchor point, press Y or click on the top icon pen behind anchor point. Too. So you can just click on the anchor point and just click it to somewhere where you'd like to use it. So for now, I'm going to use the null object for those two text, uh, text layers. So I'm going to make sure my scaling watch is selected. So I'm going to create a keyframe and I tell After Effects it has to be, uh, the scale has to be at zero at one second. And I'm just moving the time indicator to two seconds long, at just to a one another second. And I tell After Effects it then has to be at 100%. So After Effects is calculating the frames, the time between those frames where um, what the scaling has to be. So right in the middle, half of those two keyframes, it should be like 50% scaling. So basically After Effects is calculating the keyframes that has to be between those two. So um, the thing is, if I'm going to click uh, hit zero for render. You can see, let's take a look. So it's kind of very slow and it just stops. So just move the, the anchor, you can just move the anchor point, it doesn't really matter. So if you just move the last anchor point, After Effects is uh, calculating the same thing, but then in a shorter time. So if I'm going to render again, you can see it's a little bit faster, but it's just stopping. It's just don't has any easy ease fade out. So I just set it in Easy Ease, right click on the keyframe and go to Keyframe Assistance and click on Easy Ease. What it does, it just creates a slow ending on your scaling animation. Just take a look at it. 
And there you go, it, is, it just looks a little bit better than without any easy ease. So that's basically uh, how you set up something in After Effects, uh, just a very short quick tutorial for beginners. Uh, if you would like to save your footage, always go to File, Save As, and in this case you can save your After Effects project. But if you want to export it as a video file, you always have to go, go to Composition Pre-Render, click on the Output Module, uh, make sure your format is an AVI or QuickTime or maybe a WAV, doesn't really matter. Um, some formats has a big uh, big MB uh, things, it, it, some files are just very big, but I've got a tutorial about that as well. Make sure to check that tutorial out as well. So make sure your video output is RGB plus alpha and color management doesn't really matter in the beginning. So go to your best settings, make sure you've got the best settings selected. So it's size 90, 20, 1080, full is the user resolution, blah, blah, blah. Um, Maincom.avi is just the path where you want to save your video. Hit. Uh, save and click on render so it's rendering your video footage uh, as a video file so that's basically how you do something in after effects very simple for the very beginners um, for you guys uh, if you got any questions about it just leave it in the comments if you want something more advanced you can ask it as well so i would like to teach you guys as well so i hope you guys liked it make sure to hit the thumbs up button if you would like to see some more videos make sure to subscribe to check me out later again and I will see you guys in the next video. So, hey, see you later. Bye.